so we'd like now to invite Assistant Prof. Uh, Dr. Muhammad Rashdan to deliver the talk on catheter selection and insertion techniques. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Shah. Okay, Assalamualaikum, very good morning to all. I will talk to you about continuous peripheral nerve block catheters. Uh, selection, insertion techniques that we usually do in most of our current practice nowadays. Okay. So, for your information, there are various types of catheters and also there are various types of needles that need to be uh, inserted that we use every day. So, the needle type, uh, the facet type, and also the tohi type. So, these two are the most common that we use every day. Most of our single shot uh, needles are facet type. And there are various types of catheters. We have stimulating catheters. We have even the echogenic catheters, like this one. Epidural catheters that we have almost uh, in every hospital simulation. Catheter over needle is a new uh, catheters. And also there are multiple catheters that have about six ports. Uh, at the at the end of the about uh, four cm from the end until the uh, catheter length, they have multi hole catheters. Okay. So for for continuous peripheral nerve blocks in clinical practice, a paper by uh, Xavier Capdevila proves that uh, CPMBs provide better analgesia than intravenous PCA with morphine, and it is as efficient as efficient as epidural analgesia to induce. They, have, they induce fewer side effects, but have uh, technical problems to insert, of course. So this uh, using ultrasound to insert catheters is a promising field. So the debate still open concerning the comparison of CPMBs with continuous infiltrative or intraocular techniques for post-op pain and rehabilitation. But these such new techniques should have a place in the our armamentarium of each anesthetist involved in the treatment of orthopedic surgery. There's a paper by Fredrickson where it compares between an end hole, triple hole, and novel six hole catheters for continuous interscanning analgesia. Previously, I thought that we use epidural every day, suggested that multi hole catheters are suggested to improve catheter performance compared to end hole catheters. Uh, this finding was consistent with uh, the studies of uh, epidural analgesia that we use almost every day. But by Fredrickson, they found out that actually there's no evidence to support the catheter or multi, multi orifice configuration in the aspect of continuous peripheral nerve block. This actually is contradicts whatever that we have for epidural. Okay. So another paper by uh, Alessandra, ultrasound guided continuous femoral nerve block and randomized trial on the orifice six hole versus n hole. In this uh, superiority, in this superiority trial, catheter orifice configuration did not influence the effectiveness of continuous femoral nerve block, and the quality of analgesia was similar, with no reduction in either local anesthetics or morphine consumption and equivalent post-operative cordyceps weakness. So, for stimulating catheters, uh, the evidence says that uh, from uh, from Astrid, uh, better analgesic effect from stimulating catheters. Future trials should be conducted in a standardized manner with uniform reporting of outcomes, which may facilitate future quantitative analysis of uh, stimulating catheters. The paper said that reduction regarding the need for analgesic rescue treatment was between 8 to 56 percent in the groups using stimulating catheters as compared with non stimulating catheter groups. I think because probably because as stimulating catheters, they can be used. In a ward where we can check the position by using our nerve stimulators. We have, uh, for us, in our experience in uh, Sukarno Shah Medical Center, actually, yes, it gives a good uh, benefit to have stimulating catheters, but to, to, to compare it with non stimulating, it's actually not much of a difference, actually. Another uh, paper in the Canadian Journal where they compare the catheter over needle assembly. Uh, with the, the usual uh, uh, in in the what uh, supracubical vertical plexus block, where using the catheter over needle assembly uh, facilitate effective delivery of uh, supplementary anesthetic, and the time to perform the block is also 
uh, shorter compared with uh, we use the uh, catheter, uh, the other catheters. So for your information, this is the uh, supraclavicular. So the catheter over needle assembly facilitates like an inner catheter like IV assembly. So the catheter is just at the end of the C81 corner pocket. So this is where uh, if you put the needle here, the catheter also will be there. So there is easier for us to put in this uh, way. Uh, and also by Banshu also, uh, it compared with uh, the catheter over needle and also catheter through needle techniques and catheter over needle catheters uh, in the upper limb blocks, femoral blocks, uh, provide benefits where it minimizes the risk of dislodgement and also leakage at the catheter, catheter site. When you see if it is a catheter through needle, the space because of the, uh, the needle is bigger. So the needle puncher makes the hole bigger, catheter inside smaller. So with the high pressure of LA that we are giving, it will be dissipated out into the, uh, into the tissues. Compared with catheter over needle technique, the skin forms a very tight seal around the catheter. So a narrative review by Richard Brule uh, regarding catheter for continuous peripheral nerve blocks compared with the newer alternative analgesic modalities. Using current, uh, using the electric current with either the needle or the catheter required a longer insertion time and ultimately proved more costly. Nonetheless, using electric current to supplement ultrasound guidance for difficult to visualize deep structures, for example, source compartment block, or in a newer uh, inexperienced practitioners, your targets may provide beneficial and challenging cases. So this is what we are practicing now because in uh, our centers, we have a lot of newbies in experience. So usually I would advocate to use electrical stimulus. There's also self calling catheters that curl immediately on editing the needle, theoretically decreasing the catheter tip to nerve distance. And a catheter attached to a needle that is passed adjacent to the target nerve and then exited out of the body on the other side to transfer remain in plane trajectory is the way to go for catheter insertions. And the paper also said that perineural catheter that is introduced over an insertion needle theoretically decreases the incidence of leakage similar to like an IV catheter. And it's a novel needle over a set to also decrease leakage. There's also a test where we do the air test to, to, evaluate, to evaluate where is the catheter. But unfortunately, uh, it's like still on the operators to see or not to see the catheters. And there's no differences in visibility between the experimental echogenic and also the standard stimulating catheters, also visualizing aesthetic location using a 3D ultrasound and the catheter stylet pumping combined with color Doppler are promising techniques, but this one has never been validated. So it's a nice thing for you to, to do to know where is the catheter tip in the ultrasound. So what is the best equipment and catheter? continuous peripheral nerve block, you need to discuss with your surgeon, your timing to do the block and plan for the operation, what the surgeon wants. And then uh, do they need to immobilize or physiotherapy after surgery each of the limbs? So it all depends on the surgeon, what are their preferences? Some surgeon will want to make the patient move on post op day one. Some will say no need to move, only post op day three, start physio. So it all depends on the surgeon. You need to discuss with the patient also, take an informed consent. Uh, discovered on catheter insertion, especially in awake patient. For example, if we do uh, catheter techniques for erector spiny plane block ASP, it's quite discomfort for the patient. So most of the time, sometimes catheter inserted under GA, but this one really we will insert it really after the end of the operation, at the end of surgery. So you can take your own time to put. You need to have a good ultrasound machine that can at least see the planes and also see the nerve. And also sometimes if you are lucky, you can see the catheter itself. You need to have a good assistant. Uh, this assistant, it will help you to, to give the LAs to, to help you in, in tunneling and everything. You need to plan to do the catheter peripheral nerve block. Is it pre-op or post-op? If it is pre-op, you need to have your time at least for about one hour before the surgeon wants to start. That is actually for our center. So for newer, newer, newer operators, probably you take about two hours for it to, to insert. Okay. 
And then to do the continuous peripheral nerve block also, you need a minimum of 30 minutes. That is how we time in our center where most of our senior registrars will put bilateral uh, quadratus number of block catheter. The fastest they can do is about 30 minutes in supine position. Sometimes you can take about two hours or more, especially for ESP catheters. And sometimes you need to expect and prepare for failure. Sometimes after we try so many times until the operator is tired, so we can't insert it. And also bear in mind complications can happen also. For example, the motorex or other complications, despite the paper saying that complications for catheters is a bit rare, but the immediate, sometimes it can happen. And the, late, the uh, later complications like infection, infections also, sometimes it can uh, be quite uh, problematic to the patient. So the best human catheter, you need to have a sterile procedure, you need to gown up, we have to have your ultrasound broad cover, a TNS set to like toilet and surgery set because this set will have your, your forceps and also your needle holder if you need to, to stitch the catheters. For personal preference, of course, fast and easy insertion, we prefer a catheter over needle set, but this is of course cost need to purchase. It's not that really cheap to buy. Uh, needle for catheter through needle sit and face set or to heat tip is both are acceptable. It depends on the operators how how they perform it. Uh, in Malaysia, because we have a lot of uh, epidural insertion, so we have abundance of epidural catheters. It's a very good alter alternative, and then it's quite not say cheap, but it is readily available compared to if you want to do your catheter over needle sets. Uh, you have your curl catheters, your catheter body needle sets, you have stimulating catheters, multi-hole catheters, soft or rigid catheters, all these catheters uh, is what we call it's expensive. It's nice to have, but for a busy hospital, probably if you have one, it's also enough. If you have this, you want to try, yes, but bear in mind in our center also, patient need to pay, so it is really not recommended to have all these such uh, Multi, multiple types of catheters. So if you have time, you can go to the Nasora website where you can see the whole of this uh, summary of the catheter insertion. But at the end of the day, for us in the SIGRA, what is the best in the operator's hand using the whatever that they have, whatever ultrasound they have, assistance and so the technique that the operator is familiar with. So next is for insertion techniques. For a reminder, each time we do our continuous peripheral nerve blocks, we need to have our intralipid available because LASD can happen anytime in any patients. So this one also with the uh, guidelines for LASD must be there and readily available. So for insertion techniques, there are three ways. Uh, it is in needling in plane where the nerve in short axis, needling in plane where the nerve in the long axis, also needle out of plane where the nerve in the short axis. In this paper, uh, it shows that uh, the, the techniques where your needling are in plane, your probe is there. You take, for example, femoral, femoral nerve, where the nerve you see in the short axis circular in nature. The next is needle inserted out of plane, but then the nerve is still a short axis. This is very technically challenging to do, but sometimes we do it. For the next is uh, needling is in plane, but the nerve also is long axis. Um, sometimes we do it, for example, for uh, femoral catheters for physiotherapy, for manip post manipulation of adhesive capsulitis, but to do this actually takes longer time. Okay. So pathways of femoral nerve catheters placed using ultrasound guided in plane versus out of plane techniques. Uh, the paper by Benedict Partner. Femoral nerve catheters inserted by the ultrasound guided in plane techniques flip easily more frequently than catheters inserted by the out of plane techniques. So, moreover, the distance between the catheter tip and the trunk of femoral nerve is greater for in plane catheters than for the out of plane catheters. Despite these findings, post rotator Malaysia did not seem to differ between these two techniques. Okay. Is there any need uh, for us to expand the perineural space before catheter placement for continuous peripheral nerve blocks? There's this debate regarding the benefit of if we give the dextrose 5% to expand the space before we try in the catheter. 
uh, suggests that steep angulation of a needle, such as a depth of 15 cm of catheter insertion, should be avoided. Uh, the absence of difference in characteristics of the electroloculation between groups confirms that tetros 5% was an optimal fluid medium for expansion as uh, D5 maintained the stimulus if you use the nerve stimulator. The results show that catheters will still require more current than need to stimulate the needles. Uh, this difference is a matter of distance only. So in conclusion from this paper by Charles, Expansion of the perineural space with D5 is useful for catheter placement in continuous peripheral, uh, continuous femoral nerve block. So next, uh, a paper also by uh, Megan, does opening the space before stimulating catheter placement at a value, besides its cost uh, time consuming. Uh, this study paper demonstrated fewer needle pass and shorter catheter threading time in the control group, but this was not clinically relevant as the quality of nerve blocks, the ease of placement, and total procedure time were similar in both groups. They believe that expanding the perineal space should therefore be based on operator preference alone. So, but this technique is still an advantageous effect uh, over blocks because uh, we need a space for us to thread the uh, catheters. So if the space is small and then you are you haven't hydrodesec it, so for us to push the catheter sometimes very difficult, especially if the catheters are uh, very soft. So next paper is uh, by Merit. Uh, if this study compared uh, when to give the LA, is it through the needle or once you thread in the the LA? Uh, sorry, thread in the the catheter itself. So it compares between the through the catheter block or infracubicular also through the needle technique. So this paper says there's no difference. If you want to give the LA through the catheters, also can. Through the needle also is uh, also can. There's not much of difference. And then uh, catheter just now uh, by Dr. Amrita has already said about this uh, catheter uh, paper. What I want to highlight is actually the, the way that they insert the catheters. It's actually uh, uh, how they insert with this paper. This is actually what we actually do almost every day today. And we found out this is actually the best and the fastest way to do and much more simpler to learn. So in this paper, this clinical study paper use a catheter perpendicular to the nerve technique in ultrasound guided continuous femoral nerve block for the first time and show that using this technique, it shortens the time of catheter insertion, provides similar quality of analgesia after your total knee replacement compared with placing catheter along the peripheral, along the parallel the uh, femoral nerve. So with this femoral artery, this is a femoral nerve. So the catheter is placed just, just below, below the nerve. So you can see the tip there. So that is the fastest way that we can put uh, the for the femoral catheters. Then the paper saying in uh, anesthesia, what about the dislocation rates of perineural catheters uh, placed either perpendicular or parallel to the femoral nerve? So uh, in this paper, actually there is not much of difference saying that it's either parallel or, uh, or uh, perpendicular. For us in our centers, we are used for uh, perpendicular. So we have about quite high of dislocation rates. So it's still a learning curve for us to put, to make to make the catheter not dislodged. So to make it not dislodged, there are ways where we could tunnel, especially in uh, thoracic epidurals where uh, tunneling is associated with fever infection, fever dislodgement. It's like an option from epidural where it remain in situ for more than a few days. So tunneling is like uh, a way to go for uh, catheters. So in this paper by uh, Pine and Freeman, they compared the force of extraction peripheral catheters under three different situations in four sign model, untunnel, tunnel, and double tunnel catheters. So they found out that tunneling a peripheral nerve catheters leads to significant decrease in the force required for dislodgement. But uh, if you do a uh, second tunneling, it's uh, further will increase uh, reduce the risk of dislodgement. Okay, so once you put a catheter 
uh, you need to tunnel it. And then for to further improve regarding this, just now there's a seepage of LA. So there's what we call a glue stitch. Okay. I know some people will say that uh, this glue stitch is expensive. Yes. This one is uh, for us in Malaysia is a bit cheaper. This one is the most expensive. Usually we would take from the surgeons, but to, to open this one, to use as like this, to put uh, one, two, three, four dots on the patient, it's going to be costly. But if you can find a good uh, blue stitch that is much more cheaper like this, probably that will be a better option. For us in our centers, we don't have, we have this one, but it's expensive. This one, uh, I used to buy it by myself just to put on the patient. So, I, it's a bit expensive, but still it is good practice for the patient, clear benefit to the patient. So another one is where they put the glue on the clamp itself, because there's uh, some dislocation of it. This clamp also, in the newer papers, after this I will tell you that you still need to put your strip and, and put, and, and put a, 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 a tape around it to, to reduce the risk of dislodgement. And then it comes, does a catheter or a needle reduces if you sit late in continuous peripheral nerve block and then there must control trial. In this conclusion paper by Edwards, uh, enable to confirm either difference of lack or difference between continuous over needle and continuous uh, CTN system, the overall leak rate is low with the practice of dermal bone dressings and some advantage of uh, catheter over needle, catheter over needle system uh, with the risk of catheter dislodgement, but further study needs to be done to, to assess this risk. So dislocation rate by Peter Mahover has been quoted by Dr. Uh, I mean, just now, the dislocation rate is between 5 to 15 percent, 5 to 25 percent, sorry. So in our centers, the rate is about, uh, almost about quite high, 20 to 30 percent. It, it depends on how the operator uh, place the catheters, and then uh, what is the catheter for? Is the patient is immobilized on day one? Is, is the patient going for rehabilitation? So all those factors plays a role in the dislodgement also. A nice thing to have is what we call a uh, needle, uh, novel needle guidance system. I know it will increase some of cost, but actually you will cut time with this Infinity Plus for the catheter insertion. It will make it uh, more helpful, especially for, for, for newbies to insert catheters. So comparison of the latest uh, paper, comparison of perineural catheter fixation methods, a volunteer study, they found out that the strongest and ideal catheter fixation method when clinically feasible is the use of uh, tegaderm, uh, stage two, to octicinoacrylate and also the insertion at the insertion site and uh, adhesive medical spray. And then they also recommended to, to put a service strip between the catheter and the clamp to, to prevent from dislodgement. So they did a study by this paper, uh, all the various ways of, of putting it, uh, the way to either put a glue only or dressing only, but uh, all this actually, it all depends on which center you are and then what is the cost and how much uh, money you have. For example, a dislodgement for you to reinsert back the catheters. That also needs to be considered. So for practical insertion techniques, I would also, I would always advocate to do pre-scan and distance calculation regarding the insertion site. Also, how many CM you want to leave inside the, the nerve. Easiest is in plain needling with nerve in the short axis. Use the catheter over needle set. It's called it is like a single shot technique where the uh, catheter is just about few mm um, at the end of the tip. Usually it is advocated to leave about three to five centimeter catheter in space. If you try in more than five cm, there's a risk of nothing. Then of catheters, especially if you have this kind of catheters. Liquid adhesive just now with an adhesive dressing to put like this. And then you need to balance between the risk of complications and also cost among patients. Okay. So I know this is not cheap to, to, to do, but the benefit is actually more 
In this patient where we put a femoral nerve catheter post uh, manipulation of the knee joint, and this uh, catheter has been put for about uh, five days for the patient. So the patient is on a CPM machine. So continuous uh, physiotherapy done. So in this patient, we, we tried, uh, because she's an educated patient, so we tried what we call a PCRA, patient control region anesthesia. So every time he wants to do the physiotherapy, he connects the catheters to, to, this, uh, to, this, uh, to this filter, and then he will press. So each time he press, he will get about five minutes of 0.2% of ropivacaine. So he knows during day one, he need to use about 10 mils. So by day two, he already knows that he just press by one, you got five mils, and then the patient can, can control himself. Not too much of motor block, not in severe pain and able to do the physiotherapy. So with that in mind, thank you very much.